Welcome to the Crop and Create Delivered Winter 2015 video series. This is the final layout video for this series, and today we are featuring a 12 by 12 inch layout. This particular layout includes lots of fun layering, adding fun embellishments, as well as includes just one photo. When you have a layout that uses one photo, try to pick a photo that best depicts the story or the theme that you're trying to tell. To start with, we're going to use this pattern paper that is a polka dot on one side and a vibrant stripe on the other. On the layout, it suggests using an element or a page piece on the left, which we are going to do with this red bow pattern paper. We'll go ahead and adhere this to the left side of the layout, making sure that it's flush. Then on the right side of the layout, it shows another piece of pattern paper. So we're going to do something fun on this side. The first thing that I did was I took a sheet of the candy cane stripe pattern paper, it has snowflakes on the back, and I ripped it. It has a white core and this is a fun element to add. We'll go ahead and add this and then we're going to layer an additional pattern paper on top of the layout. We'll leave a little bit of a gap because I'm going to add one final piece of pattern paper and I want to make sure that it shows up. Before we get it all the way down on the page, we're going to add half of a doily shape. We'll use the other half later. This mimics the look of the circular element found on the sketch. Again, if you need to, pull up your pattern paper and then put it back down. Do be careful that you don't rip the doily as they are fragile. And it takes a bit to get the placement right. Just make sure that you leave enough for another pattern paper. Now this is the other side of the bow paper and I loved that it is a Christmas text paper that looks like that has been whitewashed with a paint. And we're going to place this on the far right side. Then we're going to take one of the we're going to take a half circle that we've punched from the poinsettia paper. It has the dots on the other side. And we're going to place it on top of the red diagonal striped paper. And then I'm going to machine stitch down the side. I like the look of texture, so I always love to add machine stitching. Here's a closer look at how the stitching adds just a little bit of texture to the side with all these fun layers. Another thing you can do is use your fingers to kind of distress the doily, giving it a little bit more texture on the page. Now on the left side of the layout, there are several different pieces of pattern paper that are layered. And on the sketch, it shows that you can pink the edges and create a pennant, or you can use scallop scissors or decorative border punches here. I'm gonna go ahead and layer some of the pattern papers from this particular kit and show you how you can layer them. So the first one I'm going to start with is this snowflake paper. Again, it has the candy cane stripe on the other side. And much like the sketch, I'm going to actually cut all of my elements into pennant shapes. Why I like doing this is because they're different widths, they still look interesting even if they have similar bottoms. You can cut them at a diagonal if you want, if you want to create something that's slightly different. When you're using this polka dot pattern paper, just make sure that the text in the polka dots is facing the right side up. Once you've cut the bottom edges, then you can start layering. Before I adhere anything down, I start to place things loosely on the page so I can get a feel for the width that I want the elements to have. I'm also going to take a look at my photo to see how it looks with these particular elements all layered together. Once I get it the way I want, then I can go back and add the elements with some adhesive. And just make sure that they are straight on the page. We're gonna use these polka dots to align things on the left here. And we can use the bow pattern for placement on the left side. So I'll just make sure that the same amount of the bow is peeking out on both sides. You'll notice that the tops have different heights 
That's always a fun way to layer items. We'll add the chevron pennant. This one's going to go high. And then we'll add the diagonal piece on the left here. Again, you'll notice the height is different for all of these. Now, according to the sketch, there is a fun element here at the top. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this craft colored piece that I've cut from the craft colored cardstock in this kit, and it's going to end up here, and the title is gonna go right on here. But to dress it up a little bit, we're going to use the stamp set and do some background stamping. The best way to background stamp is to use an ink that is subtle in nature, meaning if I'm using craft cardstock, I want to bring in a color that is not too much darker than this. That way when I layer other things on top of it, it doesn't become lost. We're going to use this snowflake stamp, and if you look at it very carefully when you get it, it has music notes in it, which is going to give it a distressed look. I'm going to use a Versamark ink pad, and I'm going to create my own pattern by creating rows of snowflakes, and I'm going to alternate the rows. I always add stamping off the edges, so it looks like I've cut it out just as you would pattern paper. So you can do this for the entire strip. If you want a slightly darker color than what's showing up here, then all you need to do is test your stamp colors on the cardstock to find a tan that works very well for you. Two that I like from Stampin' Up! are Crumb Cake and Sahara Sand. Those work very well with any of your crafts. So there you can see I've created just a subtle effect of background stamping and I've created it, it's almost my own pattern paper. Then I'm going to take brown stamping ink and stamp the edges, or rather rub the edges, to give it a little bit more texture and dimension. And there you have a strip that is personalized on my own just by using stamps. We're going to be placing this particular border at the top of the layered pieces of pattern paper. But I liked the concept of a border punched item as well. So what I did is I took a book notebook kind of border punch and I punched it out from the green cardstock in the kit. And then I'm using my fingers to kind of distress the punched out border just like I did the doily. And then we're going to add that to the top of the border strip we've created. And then we can mount this at the top of those border strips. And we'll want to make sure that the same amount on this left side is the same amount on the right side. Now, this particular piece of the layout has a bunch of layering, and I'm going to keep the sketch nearby so you can see how I did the layering here. Again, when I'm placing things on the layout, I'm going to start by just loosely placing them on. That helps me to feel for how things will look when it's all mounted on the page. I'm creating a cluster of doilies. I have a full piece doily here, but I use the other half of this doily here. For the journaling tag, I'm going to use this Santa's List paper, and I want to add some more stamping, but we'll do that in just a bit. Let's go ahead and add some of these basic elements first, starting with this half doily at the top. Just leave enough of it peeking up, and then this bottom corner doily. So enough of it is showing, and then we'll add the photo. And this is just a four by six inch photo. The sketch calls for a 4.25 by three inch, but I did a full four by six inch photo. Now in the actual cut files are two, or rather three different trees that coordinate with the stamps. I've pre-cut two of the same triangles and we're going to stamp on these. So I'm using a scratch piece of printer paper and I have the two trees. You'll notice that this cardstock has a smooth side and a textured side. We're gonna use the smooth side, and the reason why I do that is because you get a cleaner stamped image when you use the smooth side. I'm using the tree that has the actual pine needles in it. This is what it looks like on the stamp set. 
You could use any of the trees, just make sure you use the correct cut file before you cut them out and stamp on them. The ink color I've chosen is called Old Olive. It's from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to stamp directly onto that cut file. That's the fun thing about the coordinating cut files with this particular kit is that it makes the fussy cutting so much easier on your projects. And because the stamps are clear, you can easily stamp in the center of each of these triangles. Let's go ahead and add them to that Santa's list card. So you can see here I have the two different trees. I'm also going to be adding this Merry Christmas pennant across the bottom. So the first tree I want to place a little bit further down. I just want to make sure that the Merry Christmas can be viewed. So I'll place this one a little lower and the second one is going to be a little taller. So when you're not looking at the Merry Christmas, or rather when the Merry Christmas isn't already on the card, this is how it will look. We'll go ahead and attach this Santa's list card. And then we can add the Merry Christmas, and I think I will pop dot this. I've done that several times on the projects I've created. And that just goes across the bottom of that Santa's list. To the upper left corner, I'm going to add some of these turquoise paper clips. I haven't used turquoise anywhere else on the layout, and that is okay because his shirt is blue. So there's ways to get around incorporating similar colors. You just need to support the colors in your photo. We're going to create a cluster of embellishments here at the top. We'll use some glue dots to hold the snowflakes in place as well as the flare patch. When you're placing them on, you might want to think about how you can layer the wooden snowflakes over the top of the stamped snowflakes. So we'll create a cluster there and then we'll come down and create another cluster here at the bottom. Again, we'll use some glue dots. And one thing I try to do is I try to bring in a couple of different shapes. I try not to use the exact same wood veneer shapes. I try and make them a little bit different. Another cut file from this particular kit is this Christmas cut file. And it says Merry Christmas on the cutting file, but I'm only going to use the part that says Christmas. To attach it to the layout, I'm going to use a glue pen. And I'm simply going to add the adhesive to the back of the die cut. I like glue pens when I have thin die cuts like this. And the wet adhesive on these glue pens dries quickly so that it holds your shape in place. We're going to do another layer title. But first we're going to start with some stamping onto the Teresa Collins labels. So the stamp I'm going to use is this magic phrase and I'm using Cherry Cobbler ink from Stampin' Up! And you can go ahead and stamp on the labels from Teresa Collins because they are matte, meaning they don't have a glossy finish, so they're easy to stamp into. To make it a little easier, I've cut two of the labels from the actual packet of labels, but I'm only going to use this bottom one. All you need to do is make sure that your title is centered on the label and then press firmly. Before placing it onto your layout, allow the ink to dry so that way it doesn't smudge. So you can see here I have cut out just the black label just to get a feel for how it will look on the layout. Then I can add it to the layout. I'm making sure that it fits across the top here and then I can add some journaling with a black pen. Before I do that, I'm going to crinkle up this additional doily, both here and on the side here, so we can make sure that we have that same distressed kind of feel throughout the page. Now I'll go ahead and add the journaling and show you what it looks like. So here you can see the journaling. The last bit, I thought I'd bring in a little bit more blue, so I'm going to use the technique that I used in the last video, and I used my typewriter, or rather my printer, to print out two letters, O and F, 
so that the title could read Magic of Christmas. And we'll just place these onto the title. And then to add a little bit of bling, we will add some dots to this half circle up here with the glitter dots. And then we'll add just a cluster of dots down here at the bottom of the page as well. So here is a look at the sketch again. You'll notice that I followed it pretty closely just by adding my own embellishments and layering. We did some die cutting and stamping. Be sure to check out all of the Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine YouTube channel videos as we have many card making and scrapbooking layout process videos. If you're interested in obtaining these kits, be sure to visit our website.